You are listening to continuing coverage of the trial of Chad Daybell from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Let's go back to the courtroom. All right. Thank you for returning, Juror 922. So 1004 will be up next. All right. Thank you for returning for this uh, individual board our Juror 1004. The uh, first topic I'd like to discuss with this juror before we get into other areas. There's been expression of hardship, which uh, was challenged and overruled by the court. However, there's also some indication of potential bias here. And this uh, juror has already expressed in the questionnaire as well as uh, in response to questioning in board art today that may have formed an opinion. So I'll begin with the state. If the state would like to conduct any individual board art regarding bias, let's begin there. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Juror 1004. Just, just a reminder, there's no wrong or right answers here. Uh, and just want you to be fully honest. And uh, we, everybody here will respect whatever, whatever your answer is. Um, going over your questionnaire, could you turn to page 19? And it looks like you saw or heard some talk radio and some media. Do you recall? Which top radio or media programs you saw? Exactly what they were talking about. Just the Harvest of Junior at all. I know I believe you mentioned the part of the documentary that I've watched. And do you call part, you know, about when you saw that media or heard that media? Um, a year and a half, two years ago. <laughs> so is it fair to say you haven't recently uh, kept up on the case? I have not. Especially once being aware that we potentially involved with this research or listening to the news about it. Um, so I want to go over a couple of your answers with you just to, to see where you're at. Uh, under 10D, it says to be honest, it doesn't look good, but I would want to get the facts before deciding. Um, and then you say you can set aside. Or put out in your mind what you've read or heard and said facts would drive my feelings of guilt or not. Correct. Yeah. Based on just the <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, based on just the prior you know, knowledge I have from like I already divulged as far as you know, media and whatnot. Um, the honest answer is, you know, yeah, my initial opinion is like, dude, yeah, this isn't gonna be good. Um, but then I did want to clarify all that statement up with Yes, we might. Sorry, forgot you're typing up with me. Um, are you ready to start? And I do want to clarify, yeah. Oh. And make it, you know, known that just because we kind of talked about this with the bias earlier, right? you hear something or have parts of the parts of the puzzle and start to form assumptions and stuff like that. Obviously, some kind of case like this where, and I mentioned earlier too, as far as, you know, from the person who found the charts of the crime. I'm not charging based on, you know, solely just what I think based on a few things. It's I need to have evidence of proof of that. So that's, you know, in this case, before I decided handing down a you know, decision one way or the other, I would want to base that decision off of the facts presented, all the details of the case, from which ones I'm sure there's I'm aware of it. It's fine. Um, and your involvement in the criminal justice system, you, you're aware of it. This defendant has the right, a very, very important right to a presumption of innocence, uh, meaning that uh, every juror who is on this juror needs to be able to give him a clean slate at the beginning. Um, so if if you were to be put on this juror, excuse me, this jury, uh, can you say without hesitation? A full commitment, you can set aside everything you heard about him and only base your decision on the facts that are presented in this courtroom. I would like to say that I could, but in all honesty, that's I think that'd be difficult. Okay. I mean, be on this. On, that's that's what we want. Thank you for being truthful. Um I one moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, we're grateful for this uh, juror's honesty. Uh based on his uh his answer is we think we need to excuse this juror cause. All right, from the defense. And, and officer, I, I really appreciate your honesty as well. Yes, sir. Quite a long answer. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Okay. Sorry. Officer, I appreciate your honesty and that there is no problem or right answer. You're well aware of that. But again, the counsel for the prosecution has said that's what this is about. And you can keep me honest about your position. I greatly appreciate it. Judge, I'll concur with the, the exclusion. And that's not to be taken personally. No, no, no. Thank you, sir. All right. The court's considered the motion to strike the cause uh, presented by the state, incurred by the defense. The court also concludes at this stage of the proceedings, there's been an indication that based on free trial and publicity and knowledge of the case, there's likely an inference of guilt that this uh, juror would be struggling with, which will result in the court uh, sustaining the strike. So thank you so much for filling out your questionnaire and returning today. And we will allow you to be excused. Please drop your questionnaire off with the bailiff. Thank you. Thank you. So next up will be 1048. All right, juror number 1048, thank you for returning for individual board dollar questioning. Uh, the court's first going to request counsel make inquiries as it relates to any previous case information, noting the juror has indicated in the questionnaire some knowledge of the case or related case based on media coverage. So uh, I don't believe there's been an expression of any concern for hardship. So if the state would like to inquire on bias for Vordar, you can do that at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. The state doesn't have any questions in this regard. All right, Mr. Pryor. I can just help. Okay. Um, just briefly to confirm here, Juror 10 4 you did say um, that you had heard of the defendant and what he was accused of due to media coverage. You also indicated you've not previously formed an opinion about his innocence or guilt. Is all of that accurate? It is, Your Honor. Okay, thank you for confirming that. Oh, without further questions on that, then the next topic I want to discuss with you, Juror 10 4 8, relates to your attitudes regarding the death penalty, and that is. Part of the questionnaire starting on page 12. Do you recall reading those questions and answering those? I do. And did you take, I know it was a long questionnaire. Did you take the time to really think through those questions and answer them as accurately as you could? I did. Are the responses you made there still uh, the same as the way you feel about things today? Yes, sir. Okay, I am going to advise you that it might be necessary for you to make a determination in regard to the imposition of the death penalty or some other penalty in this case. And please remember that any penalty you are considering should be considered as if it is absolute and will be carried out in the case. So with that in mind, you um, first in your responses stated that when you had the choice between support or oppose the death penalty, you check the box saying you support the death penalty. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, you also had certain choices that, uh, not necessarily your words, but descriptions of what you think or what is uh, most accurately would represent the way you feel. <clears throat> and that's on question six. You elected option C, and that reads, I generally favor the death penalty, but I would base a decision to impose it on the facts, law, and instructions in the case. Is that still accurate as to how you generally feel about the death penalty? It is, yes. Okay. Uh, a final question. Final question I have then is, uh, would you always be in favor of the death penalty in every case where a murder has been committed? I don't think so. I think it would depend on the circumstances of the case. Okay. And would you follow all of the court's instructions relating to the death penalty in this case if you were provided those instructions? I would, yes. All right. Thanks for your responses. Moving to the state on that topic, is there any board out from the state? There's not, Your Honor. From the defense? Yes, Your Honor, just very briefly. Very well. And, and I always... Um, I always like definites. We can't always get definites. We think statements in that I think we want to ask. You said, I don't think so. Um, could you expand <laughs> on that a little bit for me? 
Uh, what I meant by that is it, it really will depend on the circumstances of the case. I, I can't say that I, that I would always favor it. It, it would just depend. Okay. And I and I don't ever want to put words in your mouth. I want to try. It's important that we hear what your opinion is. That's more important than anything. Not the state, not my opinion, or anybody else's. What I'm hearing is that um, I'm not leaning either way. The death penalty or life in prison. Um, my decision isn't either one. It's a neutral decision, and I'm only going to make that decision after I have all the facts and all the information. Is that fair? That's fair. Would that be more accurate if there was a choice on this list in the middle that said, I'm neutral, and only after I hear all the evidence will I make that decision? If that would have been an option, I would have selected that, yes. Okay. And Judge, I have nothing else. Thank you. I'll, I'll pass it to you. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll have you return for some further instructions here shortly. Thank you for your patience today. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next up is... 1057. All right, welcome back, juror number 1057. We are going to conduct some individual voir dire at this time outside the presence of your fellow jurors. Uh, the first topic we'll just get right to is relating to questions of bias. Uh, you do have some prior knowledge of this case and you've made some indications, including a statement that said the news makes them seem guilty, and that would include the defendant. And a few other statements, you also raised your card in one question about whether or not you may already have an opinion in the case. So I'll allow the jurors to question you on that. And of course, in this setting, you're allowed to more openly explain in any detail of what you think you may already know and why you may feel the way you feel. So for the state who's going to conduct board dark. That would be me, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Fady, on am bias, please. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about something that might be kind of painful for you that you referenced earlier, which was a situation with your brother-in-law. It sounds like he was burned at one point. Yes. Um, and that you happened to be there. And, and I took him out. Okay. Um, I don't want you to have to relive the entire story, um, but can I ask, um, is he okay now? And yes. this, I'm sorry to interrupt here, but it, if this is a topic you'd wish to discuss, not in a public forum, we can do that, or you can discuss it in a public forum. It's okay. Okay. Thank you, okay. If I find it, fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. And if you change your mind at any point and would like it to, to talk about it privately, that's okay. Um, so he was severely burned. Is that what you were saying? Yes. And he did he have to get treatment for that? He spent six weeks in Salt Lake and in a burning. And then there's been residual issues. Approximately how long ago was that? It was over 30 years ago. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that that particular experience might make it difficult for you to look at some photos today or during this trial. Yes. Um, do you believe that your personal experience um, in this case um, would? prevent you from looking at the photos, or do you feel that it would just make it difficult for you? It would just make it difficult. Okay. Um, now, one thing that you're going to be instructed on uh, during this during the course of this trial is that as Mr. Daybell sits here today in this courtroom, um, he's presumed innocence, innocent, and that all of the jurors need to give him the presumption of innocence until the state uh, meet our burden of proof. Uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you able to give Mr. Daybell that presumption of innocence? Yes, I said I would definitely consider all evidence. Okay. Now, specifically with those photographs, understanding that Mr. Daybell is entitled um, to a presumption of innocence, would you be able to set aside your personal feelings and experiences and evaluate those photographs and weigh them along with the other evidence that you receive in this case? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to talk about some of the media coverage in this case as well. And, and I, I thank you for being willing to talk about such a difficult uh, subject. Uh, you had mentioned um, that, um, that you had been exposed to some media in this case. 
Um, and you had also indicated in your questionnaire that you would be able to put out of your mind what you have read and heard about this case and render an impartial verdict based solely on the evidence presented in this courtroom. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, earlier, uh, the judge asked all of the jurors if anyone had formed an opinion on Mr. Daybell's guilt. Do you remember that? Yes. And I believe that you raised your paddle. I did. Do you want to, would you be willing to talk about that with us a little bit? I just, um, in my personal life, I've always been called honest to a fault. And I had a personal situation where somebody tried to get me to go do something that I knew was wrong. And if that person would have done that thing wrong, I would have turned them in. That's my issue. Okay. So uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit as, as it relates to uh, being here today and, and raising your paddle? Well, my... My friend wanted to go confront her ex-husband who had been a little leeway with his, her daughter. And she said, and I'm taking my gun. And I said, I am not going with you. And then if she, she would have done that, and I knew that, I wouldn't try to hide it. I would call the police and tell them. Okay. So do you feel that that relates to Mr. Gabel's case in some way? Somewhat, yes. Okay. And... It sounds like that was a very difficult position that you were put in by your friend. Yes. But understanding, um, as we talked about earlier, that you have to presume Mr. Daybell innocent, do you believe you could set all of that outside of your mind? And I would do the best I could, yes. Are you sure that you could do that? Just um, brutal honesty. I, I, I probably am. Okay, okay. Um, I really appreciate your honesty, uh, Your Honor, at this time. Uh, I think it might be appropriate um, to excuse um, Madam Juror for cause. Okay, Mr. Pryor. And ma'am, there is, and as Ms. Beatty indicated, there's no wrong answer. And, and I actually have a high regard for you for being so very honest in this thing. I, I greatly appreciate what you do. Um, the fact that you've done so today, um, for it. I think that's consistent with your character. That, you speak the truth, so I agree and appreciate it all. Judge, I concur with the state. Okay, I've considered the state's motion to strike. Uh, I'll sustain that. So, juror 1057, uh, based on your uh, potential bias here from previous media exposure to the case, the court very much joins in with counsel in appreciating your service and coming in, filling out your questionnaire, taking your time today, uh, being involved in this process. This will conclude your jury service, you may be excused, and please uh, submit your questionnaire to the bailiff as you leave today. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, before we conclude then, we're going to take a late lunch. We're off the record for the remainder of the day. The court wants to meet with counsel for further questionnaire reviews, which we'll do this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna propose we start that up at two o'clock. Is counsel okay with that as a start? I skipped a step. Thank you, everyone, for the reminder. We are bringing the jury back in for cause and we'll inquire whether or not they're being passed. So while they're going to return, is the state okay with a two o'clock start time for questionnaire reviews? Yes, Your Honor, that should be fine. All right. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Very well. All right. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Having gone through the small group here, uh, remaining our jurors 752, 922, 951, and 1048. We've concluded Vor Dyer. Does the state pass this small group for cause? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Does the defense pass the group for cause? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank yes, you. Your Honor. Thank you. Very well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the four of you, you have now been passed for cause, so we're going to continue to question additional small groups until we reach the necessary number of jurors for the attorneys to exercise their peremptory challenges. You will be returning for that process, and you'll receive further instructions from our jury commissioner, Randy Rutland, who will advise you when you do need to return. Very importantly, between now and the time you do return, please do not do anything to end up uh, biased in the case by 
looking into the case. So don't do any kind of investigation into the case, follow the case on the news, try to refrain from speaking to anyone about any of the facts of the case. You are of course permitted to talk to people, including family, friends, or employers about your potential service in this case to make those preparations, but no discussion of the details or discussions about the case so that you can maintain your impartiality, which you've demonstrated here today. So that will conclude your service for now. You will be returning. The bailiff will help you out uh, for the day with your further instructions on when to return. And we appreciate your service to this point. But I'll please rise for the jury. Okay, we'll come back in for questionnaire reviews on the record, but outside of the uh, public here for further review at two o'clock. Thank you, Council, and we'll be in recess till then. There's more to come in the trial of Chad Daybell. Press subscribe so you don't miss any of our continuing coverage right here from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast.